Hello and welcome to another Tabletop Ramblings Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game Battle Report. Today's battle sees Thranduil and the Mirkwood Elves face off against a whole host of goblins and two mighty cave drakes. Today's game is going to be 700 points and this is the Thranduil's Halls or Mirkwood list. It's Thranduil, he's on foot, did debate giving him a horse but decided he's better off with his palace guard as he gives them some serious buffs. He gives them plus one fight value and plus one to wound when he's within three inches. So he's gonna stick with them. He has the circlet of kings, which gives him some magic. And he also has the extra blades and he's got heavy armor. He is accompanied by seven palace guard with shield and eight palace guard with spear and shield. And then this chap, who uh, is slightly uh, reminiscent of a Lothlorien banner, is actually a palace guard with banner, spear and shield. Then coming along for the fun is Legolas on horse. He has three Mirkwood Rangers. And then Tariel also has three Mirkwood Rangers. Quite small, but very, very hard hitting. This is 700 points of and Will's Halls. Facing off against the Elves, definitely not a small force. We have Groblog, who is not the leader, leading five warriors with spear and five with shield. And then there's a mighty cave drake with four bowmen, one chap with a spear and one with a shield. There's another cave drake painted up uh, in rainbow colours. He also has four bowmen, uh, five bowmen in fact, and a bat. And then there's a whole other host of goblins. We have this banner wielder is the shaman. He has three with shield, three with spear. Then there's a captain with shield just here. He has three with spear, three with shield. And then this captain here with no shield, modeled by the Durbers uh, king there, but he is a captain with no shield. He is gonna be the leader. His job is just to stay at the back and pray that we don't roll contest at champions. And he has with him, same as a lot of other warbands, three with shield, three with spear. This is a fairly sizable host. It's not a Moria Horde army for 700 points, but it's, uh, it's got quite a bit of punch with the two cave drakes and a bat to hopefully help out fighting those high fight value heroes. So that is 700 points of Moria. And we'll then get rid of them and take a look at the board. This is the board for today. We've been relegated to the kitchen, but at least the uh, lighting in here is not too bad and the uh, the board is now a proper four by four board the scenery is just a couple of scattered trees there's a bit of a sort of difficult terrain woodland area there and a few orcish tents nothing too heavy quite a lot of open space but a couple of line of sight blockers for the archers you may be able to see two objective markers. There's one just here and then one up there, just in the two opposite corners of the board. And that's because today's scenario is retrieval. Retrieval is basically capture the flag. The forces deploy three inches off an, ima off an imaginary line that runs between those two objectives, corner to corner. And the idea is to pick up the enemy's objective and run it off the board. Most of the victory points are revolving around those objectives with one victory point if you can just make it move, picking it up, but then something bad happens and you drop it. 
You get three if you are in possession of it in the opponent's half at the end of the game. Five if you've managed to get back to your half with it. And seven if you can run it off your own board half. There's also one victory point for wounding the enemy leader and two for killing them. And there's one for breaking the enemy and three for breaking them while being unbroken. As always, victory points are counted up at the end of the game. And this game ends on the roll of a one or two once one force has been broken. So it has quite a random end. It could go on for ages or it could end very soon after one force has been broken, which is reduced to below 50%. With that, let's roll to see who is going to deploy their first warband with evil in red and good in green. And it will be Thranduil's Halls deploying the first warband. End of deployment and with very few warbands, the elves have just stuck down their main battle line in the middle with Thranduil, the unstoppable wrecking ball to uh, just smash forward. And then Tariel and Legolas are providing some support. The forces of evil, and we should just point out as well that they put down their eggs. Right at the start, each cave drake gets a, an egg um, or a set of eggs. And as long as they're within three inches, they are fearless, which is going to be very helpful when the uh, crown there on Thranduil pops the terrifying aura. So the goblins just went down en masse. There's uh, Groblog and the Shaman with a big horde here. Cave Drake on that flank to try and help out there. This one can go either way, depending on what the elves do. Uh, and who gets priority to start with. And then the leader captain for the uh, goblins is here, he's so that his band can, uh, can get stuck in, but he's ready to just duck behind the tent and hide from Legolas's auto hit, because he's quite vulnerable to uh, giving out some leader kill VPs. So that is how the forces have deployed, and there's nothing left to do but roll for first turn priority. So let's find some dice. First turn priority goes to good. That is uh, not ideal for the elves. Before the elves start moving though, this captain here is going to call a heroic march to start pushing up towards the elven objective. End of the movement phase and the elves with their limited numbers have stayed still in this fairly defensible position although these palace guards just shuffle back so that they were out of charge range from the beast so that it couldn't come and charge and throw down the line the rest of the elves have stayed still then for moria's move with the heroic march the goblins have charged up eight they move five and then plus three for the march and the drake was able to get nice and far up he could have moved further but he is just within three inches of his eggs so he'll be fearless because we should mention as well thranduil in the elven move automatically cast his uh, terrifying bubble so that uh, any elves within six inches of him, including himself, now cause terror. So it's going to be quite difficult for the goblins and the drakes to charge, for the eggs give the drakes fearless. All along the line, the goblins have advanced, except for the archers, who have got some shots 
and the captain uh, that's leading the uh, goblins has hidden. The bat has moved up and this drake has moved to just outside of six inches from the uh, elven line there because they move eight. So he's going to be able to charge in, although it'll be quite exposed. So we'll have to see what happens with that. The uh, only model left to move for evil is the shaman. He is going to move up there, but first he's going to spend a point of might and two will to cast a channeled fury. The channel should have been declared when we did the march, but I uh, just forgot. And it goes there off there on a six. Nice and easy. That leaves him with just one might. He been pre-measured to just behind Groblog. That means that all of the goblins within six inches of him now have a channeled fury, which gives them a six plus save. And more importantly, it also makes them fearless, which will definitely help when they uh, inevitably break, but also to uh, be able to charge the terrifying elves. So that's the end of the move phase. We'll go into the shooting. Elven shooting, Legolas and the three elves have stayed still, so they're hitting on threes. They're gonna take some shots into that cave drake. It's got six wounds, but it is the big threat. Once, it's, uh, once the two drakes are down, the Moria list will fall apart. So they're gonna shoot the drake and hope they get lucky. So Legolas will be on the tabletop ramblings dice and then the other elves will be on the other dice. Oh dear, Legolas bottles it there. Four hits, sixes to wound. Four sixes would be incredible here. Oh no, sixes. It's got that many wounds, it's just not worth two points of Legolas's might. So that is no wounds on to the cave drake on the rock ramp. Then there's the rainbow cave drake and a similar story. Three shots plus Tauriel, who has been given a bow as has Thranduil. They are gonna shoot into that drake and they do fairly well. Needing sixes. Oh, much better. Two wounds on the rainbow drake straight away. That is impressive work there. Thranduil is gonna make the same shot. He is gonna go into that cave drake as well. He <laughs> rolls a one, which is the only roll that would miss as he is, uh, is the only model, I believe, that has uh, a two plus shoot value. So uh, obviously he rolls a one and misses. That's all of the elven shooting. There will be some goblin shots. The five goblin archers here are going to be shooting into the rangers. Three of them will have clear shots and two will have to shoot through the wounded cave drake, which might be daft, we shall see. So these three into the ranger. One hit, that's all we need. I believe it's gonna be a five plus, they're so low defense, but a one will definitely not do it. So then these two shooting the same one through the cave drake, one hit. Does it hit the cave drake on a one, two or three? Yes. Six is by force to wound it though, it's unlikely. That's cocked. No, just a four. So no wounds there from those five archers. And the goblin archers on the other side have moved too far to shoot. So quite an eventful first turn. Even though the elves stood still, the goblins have ploughed right up and the elves have managed to take two wounds off the rainbow drake, which is not a bad start there. There's no combats, so we'll roll for turn two priority. And it's cocked a three. So it goes to the elves. There's definitely gonna be some heroic set being called here. With good priority then, Groblog is going to call a heroic move. And that's because a couple of goblins are in range of charging. And importantly, that includes Thranduil, who can cast a free nature's wrath. So if he goes in, 
they'll knock them all down and the uh, goblins will just get annihilated. So he's going to call just so that everyone can go in. It won't reach the drake, but at least they'll be able to turn off that spell for a turn. Over here, there's no point calling anything because the goblins won't be able to reach, so they're better off countercharging and trying to pull some stuff off the, uh, the drake if they're in range. They are quite far away, to be honest. Thranduil is not going to counter call. He's going to save his mind because the threat of that spell is sometimes just as good as actually using it. He can only use it once, so he's happy not to uh, waste might just to use that spell. He can always use it in a couple of turns and, uh, and it'll still be just as useful. So he is going to save his might, especially as there's a drake around that he might need to uh, strike up against. So we'll go ahead and do this heroic move. Roblox's heroic move has gone off. He was only able to move about half an inch forward. The chaps in front were blocking him off. Two were able to get into combat, the rest just couldn't quite reach, so they formed up an inch away from the enemy and uh, forming a wall against there just to uh, to try and keep as safe as they can. So we'll come back after the rest of the movement. End of move for turn two, and this is how the board is looking. The elves piled in to this drake. Legolas charged in, and most of the palace guard pulled away from uh, the front line to charge into the drake. These chaps have already moved, so they're not gonna do anything. And then even if uh, the elves lose priority, those three will be able to uh, block off that area and then the spearmen could just come back and support them that banner crucially is in range of that fight and those two as well the uh, the elves are just hoping to uh, slaughter the drake quickly and then be able to uh, hold off the center the goblins on this flank have just plowed forward leaving these four archers to be able to take shots into the rangers who moved. The goblins could only have reached about there. But it's just so that next turn, they are stopping anyone from being able to get in on Legolas and uh, keeping him from being tied up and kept away from that drake. Over in the center, we've already covered. But then on this flank, the elves could have retreated from the drake but the drake could have got in there and hurled through Thranduil and they kind of messed around. So they were forced to come forward. They've kept their line. They didn't charge anything. They kept their line just so that the drake couldn't have uh, any decent hurl lines. And Toriel is in such a, a position at the front of uh, sort of a blunted spear tip that the, uh, the bat couldn't get in with her because the bat halves enemy fight value after strike. So even if she struck to 10, she'd be down to uh, a five, which is less than the fight value of the Drake. So she needed to keep fairly protected. So the Drake's been able to get in on two of the uh, the Rangers. So hopefully that Drake is gonna start doing some damage. And uh, that is all of the moves. Other than the leader captain has come up to be within range of those archers. Legolas is now in combat. He's fairly safe from bow fire for the time being. And obviously he's got two points of might. So he's gonna to want to uh, either be marching them forward or getting further towards the fight for some heroic moves or, or something, but still trying to keep as safe as possible. There are a couple of bow shots. There's this chap here has a shot onto uh, that goblin. He misses because he has moved. We then have these three who have also moved. They're just gonna go after, uh, ooh. 
doesn't really make much difference actually. So they're going to go for uh, the guy's closest. Only one hit and it's a four, so no wound. Still wouldn't have got those goblins either. These goblins are going to return fire and this chap has only got a shot on that one there. So he's going to fire first and hit. Needing a five to kill, no. So then the remaining three on uh, either of those two, only one hit, needing a five, and a six will do it. So that chap is dead, and Legolas is ripe for charging next turn. That was fairly good shooting there from the goblins. There are a few more shots. There's these five here, and they are just going into the palace guard up there. They've not moved, so fives to hit. There are just one hit there, although you only have four dice for some reason. Uh, yep, yeah, so just one hit, and then a six to wound. And it's a wound. We'll whip him away. In fact, we'll take... Can we all see that, chat? So we'll take the one that is protecting Toriel. So that, again, quite good shooting there from the goblins. They've still... They've probably killed more with shooting than uh, the elves, but two wounds off the beast is probably uh, better than, than two palace guard. But not bad there for the, uh, the shoot value five strength two bows of the goblins. So that's all of the shooting. We'll go into combats. The combat phase. Legolas fighting the drake over there is going to call a heroic strike. And that is all all of the heroics. Thranduil could call a heroic combat, cut him down, go into them, try and push his way through, but he'd end up burning all of his might just to kill a couple of goblins. They've got fury as well. It's, I mean, realistically, he would kill them, but a point of might for two extra goblins it just doesn't quite seem worth it. He wouldn't really be able to get on the shaman afterwards, so... It's not worth the might, it's going to keep his might, and it's just going to be the strike from Legolas. We'll start off over here though, with a charging drake, which is five attacks, monstrous charge against two elves. The elves absolutely fluff it there, the drake rolling two sixes, the elves getting a one and a two, so they are knocked down, it's strength seven on defense three, so it's wounding on threes and eats the first one, eats the second one. They are both well and truly dead. And that is an effective Drake combat there. We'll then do this one here. The fight six plus one to wound palace guard against two goblins. Oh, it goes to the goblins, but there is a banner for the elves. So the banner reroll to a six. Oh, I thought it was cocked, but it's not. So that banner has saved them. They are wounding on fives, down to fours with their palace guard bonus. And it comes in nicely there and gets the kill. That is impressively lethal there, wounding on fours. We then have Thranduil, and we've not actually got enough dice for him. He is going to uh, find some dice and come back. So Thranduil is fighting against two. He has his double sword, so he's got three attacks, plus one for each additional person that he's, uh, he's fighting against, but that's not relevant at the moment. So one attack, and then he's got a friend as well. We'll let them roll, see if they get the six. They don't fall high. Can the goblins do it? Definitely not. So they absolutely bottled it there. And uh, Thranduil needing fours, or fives actually, but yeah, he's, uh, he's well and truly stuffed him up. He would back away that way. Although, so, oh, that's a lot of wounds. He's taken three wounds. We'll remember Fury, he needs sixes to save them. He saves one, but he definitely can't save them all. He is dead. And the guy that got killed there will roll his Fury. Oh, he survives. So we'll put him back. Wow, that is impressive. Fury uh, doing uh, doing the business there. Well worth a point of might off the Shaman. 
So one saved, one dead. That is not too shabby. We'll then pop around the board and uh, do the fights up here. So in fact, it's not fights plural, it is fight singular. Leolas and five palace guard against the Drake. The Drake does have might, but it only has heroic strength, so it can't strike. So Legolas, who has struck, goes up to fight nine. He is not going to faint. He is just going to uh, kill. So the Drake set the bar at a six. So the best that the Drake can possibly do, is it enough? We'll roll for the uh, Palace Guard and Legolas, and it is not enough. That is not good there. There is the banner. Two at six. So Legolas doesn't need to burn any might. They have won that fight. Now the Palace Guard are outside of the buff range from Thranduil. So they don't have plus one to wound. So they are wounding on sixes. And that is one wound there. Then Legolas who is strength four, is needing sixes as well against defense seven. No wounds. It's not worth point of might just to bring it down to four wounds remaining and a point of fate. So Legolas is going to save his might and that is one wound off the cave drake. We'll put a marker on there for one wound so that we remember and the cage rake will back away. It's going to back away so that no one can fit through that gap just to try and protect his flank. End of turn two and an interesting result. The elves losing a couple of guys and only one goblin dying with one of them being saved by fury. The cage drake does take a wound but uh, definitely not the level of destruction that the elves needed to, uh, to do there. So we'll roll for priority. When the lines properly clash, the elves are gonna want to uh, really clean house. So rolling for priority. It does go to the elves, but only just. So we'll, uh, we'll come back and see if the goblins are going to bother with any heroic moves. Start of turn three, and once again, it is Elven priority. So this captain is going to call a heroic move to try and get the J Drake on the charge, tie up Legolas and friends. Legolas has, after a long, long deliberation, decided to counter so that he can charge in the infantry rather than dueling the Drake. Could be a mistake, but there we go. So he's down to one might. Groblog is going to call so that all of these chaps, in fact, that's Groblog, is going to charge. All of these guys will be able to go with him, charge in there, and importantly, stop Thranduil using his spell for another turn. And Tauriel is going to counter. The reason for that is it will mean that uh, Thranduil can use his spell. But also, if she doesn't, Groblog will move forward. They'll all go in and she and her friends will get tagged, allowing the cave drake to then mess around, barge into her along with the bat and kill her. So that is uh, the heroic moves. We'll roll off to see which force is going to uh, choose which of theirs is going first. And on a four, five, six, and that is a five, it goes to the elves. So they are uh, again gonna ponder which is the heroic they want to go off. Because of course, if they counter this one, then this one will go off against them. Again, after quite a bit of deliberation, it's going to be Toriel going first. She is uh, pretty much guaranteed to uh, to get killed by the drake and the bat if she doesn't do something about it. So she's gonna move first. She's gonna courage test the charge in. Oh, she nearly fails. Courage four, she has got loads of will. So she is just gonna go in there, not very far. Then these guys are gonna form up rounder. Thranduil's going in. Thranduil 
is going to uh, use his spell on the way in, which is going to knock pretty much all of these goblins down and going to deal a strength three wound to them as well. So he is hoping for a lot of kills. After that heroic, Thranduil has knocked over loads of goblins, killing three. This little cluster here of uh, two spearmen and a uh, shieldman died. The rest just got knocked over, although a lot of them have been charged. The ones over here couldn't be charged because they were too far away from, uh, from Tariel, who called the heroic move. Tariel charged into the Rainbow Drake and the Palace Guard and her ranger friend have just formed up to stop the bat from getting in behind her and, uh, and lowering her fight volume. So that is that heroic move. We then have the captain's heroic move over there. End of the movement phase and it is all kicking off now. With that heroic move, the goblins have run up towards the objective and have also tagged the two uh, rangers. Those rangers have nine fighters, so they get an extra attack for everyone other than the first in base contact with them. So it's just one goblin and a spearman to negate that rule. Just one has pulled Legolas away. And then here, the, uh, the Drake has charged in on those three and Legolas. So depending on how the fights are, are pulled away, whatever happens, the uh, Legolas is not gonna be able to fight against the Drake. He's going to have to fight that one uh, goblin. The heroic move from Groblog has gone off. A couple of guys managed to stand up. They've charged here. And the shaman moved across slightly safer. So that as well, these goblins here were then in range of uh, Fearless to be able to charge in. Groblog is sitting behind these two, ready to heroic defense and be a bit of a roadblock in case Thranduil is going to uh, heroic combat his way through, just to try and slow down Thranduil's uh, inevitable rampage. And then over here, the two guys are still patiently waiting for some space to get through, but the bat has moved off towards the objective. It's the fastest moving model in uh, the Moria army and on the table at 12 inches. So next turn, it will be able to pick up that objective and uh, there'll be a shot against it, but it's got a couple of wounds. So hopefully Moria can grab that before the elves cut them to bits here and the bat then runs away with the objective. It is definitely anyone's game at this stage. There's going to be a couple of shots, so we'll go into the shoot phase. So it's dead easy for the elves, just that one shot into the bat. And the elf has moved, so hitting on fours, he misses. We then have these five shots. The captain has moved even further up. Forgot to uh, point that out, but these five shots have all got clear line of sight onto Tauriel. Obviously, she is in combat, so we'll... Uh, Try not to kill the Drake. Oh, not bad there. Three hits. So three hits. Does it hit the Drake or the Elf? Two on Tariel. So on the Drake. Uh-oh. Sixes by fours. Bang. There's another wound on the Drake. Oh, dear archers. Can these two on Tariel do the work, though? No. She is defense five but it needs a six to wound from a strength two bow. So those five archers have successfully wounded the Drake and left Tariel alive, which is not good, especially as a similar thing is gonna happen here. Four on to Legolas. Now, if they kill that goblin, Legolas will be back in the fight with the Drake. Maybe that's not very bright. In fact, they're gonna shoot into the Drake's combat at these palace guard. See if they can uh, kill any of those. Two hits on the drake or on the palace guard. One on each, so on the drake, nothing on a palace guard. 
a kill. That's rather nice. So we'll whip away that palace guard. That's one less warrior facing the drake. Start of the combat phase and Thranduil, who's still on full might, is going to spend a point for a heroic combat. And Groblog is going to call a heroic defense. That's Groblog's last point of might. Tariel is not going to strike. She's even fight value with the Drake. But she does have Elven Blades and she's got two points of might to try and win and crucially to try and wound. Bit of a risk, but equally, if she starts burning all of her might on strikes, it's going to take a long time to kill the Drake, so she'll end up just wasting all that might. Over here, Legolas, again, is not going to call anything. He could combat against that goblin, but he's only two attacks when he's not on the charge. Not guaranteed to go off, and he's still only even fight value with the Drake. So, just one heroic combat, and we'll do that one first. So, Thranduil has four attacks, because he is against an, two models. So, that's three plus his one. That is abysmal. He does have a friend. We get to one, and then banner reroll to a five. So the goblins here need a six and they get it. The goblins have beaten Thranduil and they're prone so they can't make strikes. So he is just going to back away. It's not worth, although he has got two might, but Groblog's called a heroic defense. He is not going to uh, do anything. So those two stand up and they uh, have won the fight. That is impressive. But uh, it also means that Groblog's heroic defense was a waste of might as well. So fairly even there. But that is the heroic combat done. So we now have the rest of the fights and we'll start off and work our way around. So we we'll start off with the Drake. The Drake against Tariel, who opted not to strike. Was that the right call? A six is a piece, so it is going to be a roll off. Only a one or a two for evil. Three plus for good because of her elven made weapon. And it's a one. So she has lost the fight. She's not trapped. She backs away. That is, uh, that is not good. So, her, oh well, either way, actually, strength seven on defense five, wounding on threes with four dice. Oh dear. That is five, uh, four wounds, can't count. She has two wounds, two fates, or possibly even three. We'll, uh, we'll roll two fates. Passes one, she will might the other, and she is down to. Oh dear me, we're gonna have to check her stats. <laughs> so she is two wounds, but she is three fate. So she's already spent one fate and a might, and that is the big six there. She saved it. So two might, uh, two fate rather, and one might. She's down to one wound, but she is still alive. That was uh, that was a big spend there, leaving her with no fate and just one point of might. The gamble definitely didn't pay off there. That uh, that was not good. So then we will come across around here, and we've got this fight here. And just while I remember, I'm going to check back on the footage. I can't remember if we marked up the uh, the wound there. Oh yes, we did in fact, because it's a three and he'd taken two from Bowfire. Although all three are Bowfire, aren't they? So back to the task at hand, two on one. That elf is going to fight it. He's a high defense. He loses. The banner's miles away. Oh dear. This is, uh, this is not going well for the elves, but the goblins famously absolutely useless at wounding. There's then this fight here first. It is elven priority, so they're going to make sure none of their guys are trapped if they can possibly help it. 
The Goblin is going to shield because he's prone and he wins. So he stands up and that elf is trapped, but it doesn't matter for uh, the Goblin can't strike there. Then we'll do this one here. It's a two on two, because again, that goblin's prone. He's going to shield and win again. That is unbelievable. So the uh, two chaps there back away. The goblin stands up right as rain. No problems there. We'll then do this one so we don't forget. And that is going to... Uh, again, he's just going to fight it, that elf. At some point, the elves are going to win a combat. And it's not that one, dear me. Sixes to wound. No, just fives. Very close there. He backs away. But more importantly, for the goblins, no goblin casualties so far. That is insane. We've done that fight. So we'll come across to these here, where it's two on one. And again, not going to shield. Oh, but there is the banner. Come on, elves. There we go. So the elf has won. He's going to make strikes. He is within three of Thranduil, so it's plus one to wound. That six easily does it. So his goblin friend backs away to make room for him, but he's dead. And then another two on one. And again, the elf is feeling lucky. Wins it there. Just, oh, we'll do uh, that chap's fury. Six plus save. And it is a six. He is alive. That is impressive. So, the elf won the fight. Can he kill? Yes. Can fury save him? No. So, this chap does die. And then a final two on one. And again, the elf's going to fight it. He loses, but he's got a banner to win the fight. This banner, of course, is the Shaman. So no banner reroll, and it's a kill. Fury save, stuck in a tree. It's a six. Fury keeps him alive. That is impressive. I have never known Fury to, uh, to be so effective in a game. It's, kept, uh, it's definitely kept more alive than it's let die. That is impressive. We then come around here and we'll work towards the Drake. We'll start off here, it's a captain and one against the elf. The captain has no might, so we'll roll them all together. The captain has won and they are wounding on fours. Strength three against four, four kills the elf. Really smashed into this flank here. We've then got a two on one. The elf wins, wounding on fives. Doesn't quite do it. This guy is gonna back away that way, just to try and get behind, get some traps, start messing around with the elven force. We'll then do Legolas on one. And the one chap is going to stab. He loses. And doesn't die. Does stab kill him? No. So he backs away. And then we have the charging Drake. So charging Drake against four. The Drake does have the fight value because they're too far away from Thranduil for their bonus. So we'll let the, uh, the four elves set the bar. The four elves only get a four high. They do have a banner to a four. That is not good. So on the charge, the Drake has, well, five dice still only gets a four high. That's impressively poor, but enough to win. So he has won. He's bowled them over and he's ready to kill. Or he could pounce on Legolas with a barge. And that is what he's going to do. He's going to barge. He gets to move one inch, but he's already touching leg last. It's more than far enough. So he shoves those guys back three. We'll do that in a moment. And he's now fighting Legolas. Hopefully this pays off for him and he can eat Legolas. 
but Legolas is even fight value, but he's only up two dice to win the fight. And he gets it there on the five. Now the beast, the drake, does have one point of might and he could spend it, but then it's gonna be a draw. Is he gonna roll a one or a two? The elven weapon there giving Legolas the advantage. No, he's gonna allow Legolas to win that fight. That barge was too greedy and Legolas makes strikes against him. Doesn't wound the drake, but uh, that is unfortunate. And then these guys move back three. We'll, uh, we'll measure that and, uh, and sort that out. End of turn three, and not a lot has happened. A couple of guys died, but two big things stand out. One, Channel Fury is amazing, and two, Greed will get you killed. Tariel saving her might and not striking, huge mistake. Barging into Legolas, huge mistake should have just gone for two kills or even a hurl he uh, he went went for gold the drake it would have been amazing if it had come off but uh, but a mistake to be greedy so this is how the table is looking we'll roll for turn four priority and again it goes to elves four for four on priority let's uh, come back and see if there's going to be any heroic moves Elven priority for the fourth turn in a row, but the goblins are not going to call anything. The leader captain still has might, but he's too far away to be effective. The two drakes have might, but they are reluctant to spend it on something as mundane as a move when they can use it to win fights and to, uh, to mess about like that. So no heroics from the goblins. It is elven move. Rainbow Drake interrupts this video to say please like, comment and subscribe. End of the movement phase and it is carnage. One palace guard has charged into the uh, five wound drake, tying him up while a ranger has gone into two so that he gets an extra attack. Palace guard that was prone could only reach him. Legolas has charged into the captain on one who's then been surrounded. This chap here is not in base contact not meant to be, he's been knocked. He's just there to trap. Uh, oh no, in fact, changed our mind so that he, uh, realistically, Legolas can't kill them all. So it's fine for him to be in. Then over here, the goblins have been able to rearrange a bit and counter charge because it's now a very thin line just holding back the goblins. They'll probably still do a fair bit of damage, but Thranduil has left them to charge into the Drake, along with three Palace Guard and Tariel. They are planning to just gut the Drake as quick as they can and smash through and get behind. The Goblins have got as many spear supports as they can. The leader, Captain, has moved so that he can heroic move these chaps, but he's safe enough from uh, anything too nasty from uh, Thranduil and Tauriel. And then crucially, up at the top, the Bat Swarm has picked up the objective. So the Bat Swarm now needs to run off either this edge or this edge, the uh, side that the Goblins deployed on to get the, uh, the most points. But that is easier said than done. This flank's the best, although Legolas, if he can gut the Captain and Co, could well uh, do some damage against the Bat and over here, the Stranduil and Tariel. So it is not over for the Elves and they are certainly uh, in a position now to deal some big damage to the Goblins. There will be a couple of shots, so we'll go into the shoot phase. We'll start off with these five and they're gonna shoot into Thranduil. They've all got a clean shot, obviously in the way for the combat, but uh, see if any hits. So two hits. Do they hit Thranduil or the Drake? One on each, so on the Drake. A six by three. No wound, just, just saved him. So it's a six to wound Thranduil because Thranduil is a low defense. He's only defense six. But it's a three. If that was the other way around, they'd have wounded him. 
but as it is, the render wheel is fine. Then we'll come over to this side of the board where we have these four, and they are gonna shoot at Legolas. See if they can take his horse out from under him. And, oh, three sixes. That's a good number of hits. So it is the captain who's the closest evil model. So one, two, or three, it hits the captain. Ooh, two into the captain. So on the captain, no wounds. And then Legolas, horse or rider? Horse. Does it kill the horse? A five. The horse is dead. Legolas. Um, unless he has Horse Lord, I highly doubt it. We'll, uh, we'll roll his Throne Rider on a one. He's prone and he's gonna be in trouble. On a two to five, he's fine, but won't be able to strike if he wins. And on a six, he'll be able to strike a four. So he's on his feet, but won't be able to strike if he wins the combat. Importantly, he's also lost his Cavalry bonuses. We will just check if he's got Horse Lord, because then he'll be able to use Fate to save his horse but I highly doubt it. No, Legolas doesn't have Horse Lord, so he's in the middle of that fight. He is in combat with the three, even though he isn't touching any of them. When a cavalry model is dismounted like that and trapped, they just, they remain in combat and they just go in the middle. If that's wrong, please do comment below and correct me, but it's come up before and uh, that's the answer I got from the uh, the GBHL page on Facebook. So uh, if you if you uh, agree, do comment below. And if you disagree, yeah, uh, please comment as well, especially with uh, with an FAQ number or, or something like that, uh, so that we can uh, we can take a look. So that is uh, an effective shoot phase there for the goblins. We'll go into the combats. Combat phase and. Legolas is uh, definitely not calling a heroic combat as he's been smashed off his horse. But Thranduil is going to spend his second point of might on a strike. He's not going to make that same mistake that Tariel did. He's going to strike and they're going to kill that Drake. We'll come back to that one though. We'll start off with poor Legolas. He is against four and the captain. We'll let them set the bar. They have got the lower fight value. Fight. Uh, they've got a six, rather. Um, the army bonus does give them plus one fight value when they've tracked someone, but the captain's only three base, so... Legolas still has a higher fight value, but he rolls a three high. He is uh, in a lot of trouble here now. So these are going to uh, be double strikes, needing sixes. He has got heavy armor. But this is a lot, uh, a lot of pain coming his way. So we'll grab 10 dice for the double strikes from the Warriors. And, oh, that's two wounds. Two wounds there. And then the captain has two double strikes and he needs fives to wound. Three wounds there against Legolas. Legolas, just like Tariel, is two wounds, three fate. So he is going to, uh, he's just gonna roll all his fate. And he saves two of them, crucially. So he takes one wound and that leaves him with uh, one wound, no fate. Legolas in, uh, in a bit of a, a bad position there. The next fight is this one-on-one. -on -one. It goes to the elf. And the elf doesn't kill on a three. So the goblin just backs away. We then have this two on one, but with the knife fighter rule, the elf gets an extra attack, but loses. That is not good as he is defense three. So going down on fours, he's dead. It's always a bit of a gamble with the uh, lightly armored ranger elves there as to whether you're going on multiples but he didn't really have a choice as there's so many goblins on this flank so then we'll do the drake didn't charge so he's four dice and that palace guard is definitely going to be shielding but the drake has won it is the drake gonna barge try and get closer to the fight no he's just going to uh, kill him 
and he does on the four, only just, but he has killed. Just trying to get rid of as many elves as possible on this flank so that the bat can fly down and so that they can uh, really gang up on Legolas as well. Not that Legolas is the leader, but uh, there we go. So then we'll come across. Groblog's managed to get in on there into the action. Um, we don't really need to roll to see if his crown goes off because he uh, is going to be a lower fight than everyone anyway. No elves are trapped. And that elf is going to shield. So Groblog and two. Groblog's out of might. It's one. However, there is a banner which is out of range of that fight. So the goblins win. Groblog needing fives kills him. Groblog has killed that palace guard. We then have a two on two. And again, it goes to evil, but this time they are in banner range and it comes in. So they have one. And then can they kill? Yes, on the six, they have butchered that goblin and he is dead. And uh, his friend will back away to make some room. We then have a three on two. Two elves with a banner. They should be winning this. They do win it, don't even need the banner. They're out of range of the buffs from Thranduil, but they are still wounding on fives. Oh, but not enough. Oh, so he backs away that way so that he doesn't knock him. It's quite difficult to uh, do through the camera. So that's fine. And then we've got this two on four. The elves still, still fairly likely to win. Ooh, a six for the goblins, banner reroll. No. So the goblins win. I think we jinxed that poor elf. He can back away, but he's dead anyway. So the uh, spearman backs away. That leaves the banner now on the front line. Banner has got a shield though, and he's defense six. We then have this fight here. It's a four on one. That chap is going to shield. And he loses. The banner is in range but he has lost. Again, he can back away. It's not, it's, uh, not a problem. Sixes, no, so he is fine. And then we have the big fight. So what fight value does Thranduil go to? Ooh, a measly, measly seven there. Um, oh, in fact, he is fight seven because of his sword. Let me just find out, otherwise he won't have spent that might. Yes, yeah, so Thranduil with the crown is fight seven. So he's not going to have called a heroic strike. He is just going to fight normally. Still uh, getting to grips with Thranduil's hall, so uh, apologies for that. But there's no point spending that needless might. So he is already a high enough fight value to win the fight on a draw. So we will let the elves set the bar. Thranduil will be the tabletop ramblings dice and the green will be Tariel. See if they can get the six and tabletop rambling six there. Thranduil has one. So then mix it up a little bit this time and we'll do the, uh, the plebs first so we can back away. You can back away onto uh, the eggs. They are uh, move honorable if, uh, if that's the phrase. Um, the plebs needing sixes, no wounds, but very nearly one more for each of those and he'd be dead. Then next we will do Tauriel with her one point of might. She does one wound. That is four. So now it's all down to Thranduil. He needs to do two wounds here. Three would be better because it does have a point of fate. Oh, that's not good enough. He does have two points of might. Oh, but in fact, he is strength four. So he would need sixes anyway. So the beast lives all of those resources, all of those models to try and bring it down for just one wound. That is the end of the combat phase. This is how the board is looking. It's still one big scrap, but the goblins have the objective with the bat and he is making a break for the board edge. Let's roll for 
turn or maybe five priority. And again, it goes to elves, five in a row. Turn five and leader captain spending his first point of might. He's going to catch all of these goblins and he's calling a heroic move. Thranduil is going to counter. He doesn't need his might for strikes and he realistically has got three turns to break the goblins. So he needs to counter to just pile in and massacre these goblins and just tie up that drake. With the drake not going down last turn, it, it's probably best to ignore it now. Just tie it up with Tauriel and just try and kill as many goblins as possible. About 15 goblins to break them, but it is still doable. They've got a lot of killing power. So he is gonna counter over here. The Drake is saving his might, hopefully to uh, get in on Legolas along with the bat, call a heroic combat and allow the bat to uh, go miles and also kill uh, Legolas. So he's saving his might. It's obviously not gonna happen this time around because he will be able to charge, but uh, that is probably the best play for both sides. So the roll off, one, two, or three. Leader captain gets it. And on a four, five, six, it's Thranduil. And it's a six. So Thranduil will move first. He'll be catching probably all of the elves. We'll double check if those two are in. Um, but probably all of them. And uh, we'll come back once the elves have moved. End of the move. And Legolas charged in and has just been countercharged by everything in the world, including a bat. The cave drake has been tagged, but he's got two friends with him now. And then along here, the elves couldn't quite plug the gap because they had to stay in range of Thranduil, but it only let one goblin pull off a spear support. It's not really the end of the world for, uh, for the elves. Fairly favorable with the banner. So the elves looking here to get as many kills as they can. Tariel fighting uh, against the Drake. She went in by herself. She spear supported, but this guy didn't. Not so much to take shots at the bat, as the bat could reach combat, but to uh, stop Tariel being pulled away. It does, however, mean that Thranduil can't heroic combat through because of the control zone of the spear support. And those spear supports fighting uh, in the combat against Randwill have moved into crazy positions to allow shots into combat and they won't be in the way. And that is what we'll roll for now as we go into the shoot phase. So these five in on Thranduil. Oh, again, not bad. T uh, three hits. So um, does it hit goblins or Thranduil? Two on Thranduil, one on a goblin, six to kill. No. So six is to wound Thranduil. There's a wound. That is a wound on Thranduil. He does have three fate. He's pretty hard to kill. So first fate is a fail. Second fate is a pass. So two fate off Thranduil for, uh, for a cheeky arrow. That's not too bad. Then there are these four archers. They could fire against Legolas. Is there really any point? He is on one wound, no fate, but he is probably going to lose that fight anyway. So yeah, they're going to they're gonna fire. Why not? So they uh, they shoot. One hits. Uh, does it hit Legolas? No, it hits a goblin in the back, but it doesn't kill him. That's fine. So Legolas lives to fight another day. That's all the shooting. We'll go into combat. Start of the combat phase, and Legolas is heroic striking. He is against the captain and the bat and their uh, friends. The captain is fight four, he's plus one because he's in array, uh, because he's uh, trapping his opponent with the uh, Moria army bonus. And the bat halves Legolas down to three. So Legolas is going to have to strike just to, uh, just to try and win that fight. And Tario is spending her uh, last might. It's, also, it's Legolas's last, and this is Tario's last as well to strike against the Drake. Thranduil 
isn't going to call a combat. All he'd be able to do is either kill that space support or that one. It's just a bit pointless, really. Um, it would leave him with no might as well. He's better off saving it for a heroic move or, uh, or anything, really, other than just one goblin for a point of might. So the uh, combats, we will we'll start here and we'll work round. So Tario Strike only takes her up to uh, fight eight, but it is high enough. Not high enough to risk fainting, but, uh, but high enough. We'll come round so that we can see. So Tario and friend against the Drake. Can they get the six? Yes, Tario gets the six. So then six is to wound. Bismol, <sighs> three ones and a two. The Drake just backs away, happy as Larry, wasting all those resources. And uh, there's a dice underneath his base. Yeah, there is. There we go. Um, he is the one that's taken. Oh, he's four now, isn't he? Three from Arrow, Fire, and one in combat. So he, uh, he backs away. Rainbow Drake, fairly unkillable. He's really tanked those heroes. So then we have four on Thranduil. Thranduil has four attacks as well because he has charged into multiple. Uh, we don't actually have enough dice. So here we go, we've got some greens. And he only gets a five. The goblins get a six. So Thranduil is going to banner to a one and he's going to spend that last point, am I? He doesn't want to risk taking any wounds as he, uh, he is fairly squishy. So he is going to use his last point of might to win and then fires to kill. He just kills one of them. So he's going to uh, whip that one away. And uh, that is quite poor there. But at least he didn't waste that last point of might on a heroic combat and then end up taking a wound. So a good call there. We then have some fights over here and uh, should be interesting. We have four on two. So four and then the two elves and the elves win there on the draw. That's what they need. They really need kills here. Fives to wound the ones Definitely not doing it there. They back away. They, they could have done it without moving the shaman. It's just a bit difficult to uh, to reach and see. So then we've got a two on two. Come on, elves. Remember how to fight. You're thousands of years old. They win. Can they kill? Fives? No, but four will be enough if they're in range. And they look like they are within three. So fours does it there. That goblin goes down through, uh, two on two. The elves lose, but they've got a banner and still lose. Six is to kill the elves. No, they just back away. We then, I mean, their spears keep locking together. We then have this one on one here. Both just gonna fight it. Goes to the elf, five to kill. No. Goblin backs away. And then we have Groblog on one. That guy is going to shield against Groblog on friend. And he wins it on fight value. So Groblog on friend, back away. And that is uh, those fights done. We'll then come around. And we have the Drake. So we'll let the elf shield, see if he can win. He gets a six, he's doing well. We then have Drake. No. And the two goblins. No. So the Drake backs away, as do the goblins. And that uh, little shielding guy is still alive. Can Legolas do a similar miracle? So he's going to strike. Ooh, he goes up three. So that is fight nine. Halved, rounding down, is only fight four. 
So he needs a six to uh, to stay in it. And even then it's only gonna be a draw and it's a five. Not good. So the bat has two attacks, the captain has two, and then there are four fellas. So that is a lot of attacks. Eight attacks, we've got six dice here, and they've got the six. Legolas is in trouble. Legolas taking a whole heap of attacks. We'll do the captain first. Wounding on fives, no kill. We then have these two, needing sixes, no kill. The remaining three goblins, no kill. Oh, will he survive? And then the bat has two attacks and kills him there. So close, Legolas. But he goes down at the last gasp to the Bat Swarm with the objective. The ultimate in, uh, in defeat there for Legolas. End of the turn, and that was nasty there for Thranduil's Halls. Legolas going down at the end, unable still to kill that Drake. It's not looking good now for Thranduil's Halls. They really, really need to pick up the pace breaking these goblins. Although they are themselves not that far off being broken. So we'll roll for turn six, I believe, priority. And again, it goes to the elm. Six in a row. This is ridiculous. So the elves will move. Um, there is still might over here. We'll just have a ponder as to whether the goblins are going to counter. So again, as it's been... Every single turn this game, it's Elven priority. So the Goblin leader is going to use his last point of might to call a heroic move so that all of these guys can move first. Saving the might on the two drakes for uh, something more fun. It's going to be uh, uncontested because all of the elves are out of might. End of the movement phase and the goblins have charged just about managed to trap one or two with elven priority they can probably get away from it all but importantly they've uh, they've held the line and they've tied up Thranduil with just one and he's able to get shot again and then over here where the elves had priority the elf didn't charge the drake instead he charged uh, this goblin by looping round because otherwise he'd have been about here. The bat could still get in, even if uh, the chap charged right in the corner, the bat could still get in. And with a heroic combat, the bat would get further towards the table edge. That was the furthest away from a table edge that uh, the um, the elf could get to. The furthest away from uh, one of the, uh, the scoring table edges anyway. So, even though he's realistically going to give his life, at least he uh, is keeping the bat swarm from getting a, a 12 inch and then a 12 inch with a heroic combat. He's probably only going to get kind of a, a bonus, uh, a bonus six or seven on where he'd have got to anyway. So every little helps there for the elves, the archers for the goblins and this chap here are now just relocating to hold up the center. These archers, however, are staying still to shoot for Andwell. And we will roll for that now. So there's five of them. They're going in on Thranduil. Two hits, they're getting slightly less accurate, but still not bad. Can they hit him? Ooh, one on each. So the Spearman is not in the way. They've all got clean shots. So the one on Thranduil needing a six. No, the one on the Elf. No, absolutely fine. So that's all the shooting we'll go into the combat phase. The combat phase then, we have a heroic combat from this Drake, leaving just a might on Rainbow Drake is the only might on the table. So there's a, a lot of dice there. There's five for the charging Drake, three for the plebs, and four for the, uh, the bats and the captain. And they've got more than enough sixes, so, the, uh, the Drake 
Oh, the Drake's going to use his gaping maw. This is going to be a huge mistake. Three plus to eat him alive. It is a three. So he swallows him whole and, uh, and kills him. That's a special rule that realistically never gets used. It's an insta kill. But you only get one dice to do it. So good against something with lots of wounds. Lots of wounds normally has lots of fate. And if you fate it, it doesn't go off. So uh, I can't really see why you'd ever use it except uh, for a laugh. I feel like uh, needs a bit of a buff, that. So that, uh, you know, you eat it and you regain wounds or something like that. Who knows? Comment below if you think that's a good idea. Um, so he's dead. And uh, these chaps now get to move off. So the bat swarm, most important, is going to move off. Whoa. There we go. So he can take the objective to the other side of the tent. And very importantly, in fact, he's going to shimmy, uh, going to shimmy round so that he's out of charge range. He's now over the halfway line. Those eggs were on the halfway line. So he's past it. He's now going to get five VPs. If he can get off the board, it is seven. So he uh, he's on his way now. The rest of these are going to move and we'll, uh, we'll then jump back into the combats. After that heroic move, we've seen the bat has moved off towards the table edge. But then the captain and the other guys, including the cave drake, have just ploughed towards the, uh, the rear of the elven line. The drake nice and close to the elves there. But we'll do this combat next. It's Groblog against a shielding elf. And the elf loses. He may be in banner range. Let's just see if it makes a difference. It doesn't. He can back away. But Groblog's wounding on fives. No. And then sixes from the spearman. No. So he backs away. Then we've got a one on one. It goes to evil. And banner doesn't make a difference. Evil needing a six. No. He backs away. We've then got a one-on-one -on -one here. Oh, evil win, but banner to a two, but it's enough. But no wound there, so the goblins back away. We've then got, they've just been knocked, but it's two on two. And it goes to good. Can they wound? Yes, a six will easily do it. He backs away through there, but he's dead. We then have here, the banner. Uh, we'll do this fight because it will be passed on anyway, so it's not really a big deal. So the, uh, the goblins will set the bar at just a four. So the uh, TR dice, tabletop ramblings will be the banner. And they've won. So then two to kill and big tabletop rambling six. That is a kill. So he backs away. We've then got a two on two. The shaman does have a spear. So that is two on two. And uh, the front elf is going to faint. Should have been doing that all along. And yeah, it's a draw, but the elves have it on fight value. They are then wounding on fours because of Thranduil. And that tabletop rambling six easily gets the kill. Then we have Thranduil himself. He is just fighting against one. So he only gets his three attacks. And he only gets a five. They could do it with a six. And they have done. Thranduil now needs a tabletop rambling six, and he gets it. Ask and ye shall receive. He's got it, and he's going for blood. And he gets two more sixes and kills that goblin. Where have those dice been for the elves the, uh, the rest of this game? So now we have Tauriel. She's got no might to strike. She's against the drake. She does have a spear support and she has an extra attack because she is outnumbered. She managed to charge in against uh, the Spearman and the, uh, the Drake. So she has 
four attacks plus the spearman and gets the six. What does the drake get? So the drake is four attacks, also gets a six. So it is a draw, a draw. Last time on just the one went to the drake. So this time, surely it's got to go to Turiel. Can she do it? One or a two, it goes to evil. Three, four, five or six, it goes to good. And it's a five. Doesn't even need the elven weapon bonus there. She has won the fight and is going to be making strikes. So we'll do them all together. Needing sixes. Oh, there's one. The Drake has taken five wounds, but it is a six wound, one fate model. So it's still alive. One wound, one fate. Backs away as do the goblins that uh, that drake is putting up a serious fight so that is the end of the turn the elves taking even more casualties but not quite broken so the game will continue into turn seven we'll roll for that now surely surely goblins are going to get at least one priority and we on a six the goblins have priority and uh, we'll get to move unimpeded because there's no might left for the elves. End of the movement phase and finally goblin priority. They have surrounded the elves. Everything is in combat. They're, uh, the drake has managed to charge two. This chap's surrounded by loads. The reinforcements from the right flank are coming across. And Tario has been picked on by uh, those two. The palace guard spear support being tagged by uh, a spearman. All so that this one wound Drake could charge into Thranduil. Just to see if, uh, if he can get lucky and kill Thranduil. It's a bit of a, uh, a whoever wins that fight will uh, will kill the other. But uh, you uh, you only live once. And then the captain, with that in mind, has just legged it. That's the leader captain. He is just running away. He's used his might for uh, heroic moves. So now he's just leaving the, uh, the area just to make sure he doesn't get killed. Bowman coming round. And importantly, all the way over here with just a few inches off the board, the Bat Swarm. Five points now, but uh, next turn he'll be off and that will be seven. The uh, the Elves now just trying to get victory points for breaking the uh, Moria Force, but uh, it's looking unlikely now. Um, especially uh, as their luck seems to have abandoned them. This guy here tried to charge in uh, against the Drake and failed his courage test to uh, to help out uh, Thranduil. So he's going to take a shot. He's just going to fire into one of those spearmen. Uh, he hits. He needs a five to kill. And it's a four. The uh, the archer there has uh, failed his courage test and failed to, uh, to kill with his bow. He is a bit of a failure, but there we go. So next we'll do combats. And we'll do this one first. We'll see if Groblog's crown goes off because he can get to fight five. No, it doesn't. Goes off on a four. That will give goblins within three inches plus one fight value. But uh, look, there we go. So the palace guard is... Uh, he's going to shield. And bottle it on double ones. With a banner. Will he banner it to anything good? Just a two. So... Groblog and three friends. That's five dice. They get a very low score, but it is more than two. So then rolling to wound. We'll do Groblog first, needing fives. And that guy is toast. So in fact, it was six dice because there's uh, spear support as well. And uh, next we will do the Drake. So the Drake on the charge against two... 
They are going to shield because he's only taken one wound, that drake. So it's not like they're going to kill it. And it is a draw. Oh, is it? They need to be within three inches of Thranduil, and they are not. So they are only fight five. They've lost. They're going to get eaten by the drake. So the drake wounding on fours. First double strike kills. Second double strike kills. Both of those are killed. The drakes have, uh, have done quite a bit of work this game. They have, uh, have been much, much better than the last time I used them, which didn't make it onto the channel because I had a horrendous cold and it was awful. But uh, the drakes did nothing in the previous game. So they've been very lucky here. Um, this one has only just survived. But uh, that may well change as he's facing Thranduil. So we'll do a two on two. And it goes to evil, but there is the banner and it's still evil. So needing sixes and he dies. He is dead. So then we've got the banner and one against two. So we'll uh, roll the banner as the uh, tabletop ramblings dice. And they win. So then can they kill? No, not quite. Oh, in fact, yes, because they get plus one to wound near Thranduil. So that four has killed. That's a incredibly powerful buff, but they just didn't have the numbers to uh, to really use it all that well. Oh, in fact, um, Fury is. <laughs> Saves him. Unbelievable. That is so unlucky for evil. We'll do, uh, for good rather, we'll do two on one. And that chap is just going to fight it because he has no shield. He has one banner. He wins. He's going to need a six. Doesn't get it, but uh, not dying is quite impressive. Then the... Uh, We'll save Thranduil till last. We'll do the one-on-one -on -one just there. We'll come round a little bit because it's starting to uh, rip my back in half. We'll come round. So that is a one-on-one uh, -on -one there. And it goes to evil. The banner's a long way away, but no wound. We then have Tariel. She has three attacks and bottles it. Can they win? Yes, on the six. She's one wound, no fate. Another six will kill her. Double ones. Not good enough there from the goblins. And she backs away. And then we have the final fight. We have Thranduil with the higher fight value against the Cave Drake. So Thranduil, three dice to win the fight but it is a charging cave drake five attacks on the charge oh only a five but it does have a point of might so it can get the six friends will need a six to win and he definitely doesn't get it he's got the banner though can he get a six no it's a two he has lost and the drake doesn't even need to use any might. This could be the end of Thranduil here. So we need 10 dice. Wounding on fours. It looks like it could be the end of the King of the Woodland Realm. And it is one, two, three, four wounds. He spent two fate to ward off that arrow. He is dead. That was a big gamble there from the Drake, but it's paid off and Thranduil is dead. That is three victory points. No, two victory points, in fact, for killing the leader. But the game's not over because the elves, oh, actually, they may well be broken now, but it will be the end of next turn that we start rolling to see if it ends. So we'll roll for priority. It goes back to the elves. And we'll, uh, we'll just see if they are indeed broken. End of the movement phase. The elves 
definitely broken with just seven left, but they've all passed their courage tests. The Palace Guard are no longer bodyguards, so they're no longer immune to uh, to fear because Thranduil is dead. But uh, Teriel, nice and brave, although only just on a four, passed her stand fast, and that chap passed to uh, charge the beast. She passed to uh, charge the other one. And uh, the elves have just gone in to, uh, to try and uh, give their lives with, uh, with at least killing a few on the way. They are, uh, they are in serious trouble. And the bat has flown off, so the uh, victory points are going to be fairly high for the goblins. Let's see, though, if, uh, if Tariel can at least kill this drake. First off, though, we'll do this one. It's a two on two because of the knife fight, a special rule. And the elf loses. Deary me. Too far away from Banner and dies. The uh, the rangers have been absolutely useless. They uh, they definitely need to be changed out to Mirkwood elves. So we'll come back to Tariel. We'll come back to her. We'll do this three on one. He's going to fight it. He, uh, he knows he's not going to win the game. Oh, he <laughs> wins the fight. And he kills. There we go. This is the comeback. The elves are going to do it. So next off, we've got this fight here. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. And it goes to the goblin. But Banner, still the goblin. Can the goblin kill him on a six? No. So he just backs away. He uh, he can probably stay within uh, base contact of that banner. We'll do that fight next. So the banner shielding against two. So the banner, negative one. Oh, that's cocked. Still a three. So he wins. It go, his goes down to a three, but he wins on fight value. And he pushes those two goblins back. We then have this poor chap here. Does the crown go off? Yes. So Groblog is fight four and then up to five because he is trapping his opponent. So he's even fight value with the Palace Guard, who has dropped to fight five, because Thranduil's dead. Um, so he's obviously no longer within three. So, in fact, we'll, we'll roll the Shielding Palace Guard, who gets a six. He's doing it. We then have two for Groblog, and then one for the, uh, the Shaman. Three peasants. So that's five. Looking for sixes. And they get it. So it's a roll-off. It's not an elven made shield, so it is a one, two, three for evil. They uh, they obviously outsource their shields, and it could well spell his death. That was a three, so Groblog for strength four, needing fives, and that is uh, a seven, which is a bit of a misprint on the dice, but that's enough to kill him. So I mean, obviously that's a six, but uh, it has killed him. Not having an elven made shield there, the death of the elf. And then the only other fight is Tariel. So she has an extra attack because she's also against the goblin. So she has four attacks and she has her spearman friend. So that's five dice. She's going to set the bar at a six. She loves it. And it is five dice for evil. Four for the Drake and one for the Spearman. A very even fight. And it's a six. Now her blades are elven made. She's not outsourced those like a shield. So it is just a one or two for evil. Three plus for good. Can she do it? Yes, she has won the fight. And now she's looking for vengeance on the, uh, the Drake that nearly killed her and killed the king. So we uh, will do her four first. She's put a wound on and then her friend doesn't. So one wound on the drake, which will kill it. It has a point of faith. Will the drake survive? Oh, it's a three. And he's got that point of might he's been hoarding all game because Thranduil couldn't roll high enough to force him to spend it. He is going to, uh, in fact, no, not a, a six. He's going to spend that might to save 
his fate. So he still backs away and Tariel unable to kill him. That is unfortunate. We then, in fact, do have one final combat. Should have, uh, should have done that one last. Um, forgot that there was this one. It is the, uh, the Drake on one. The Drake doesn't quite get a six. What will the blokey get? He gets a five, banners it to a five. The Drake has the fight value. He's trapped, so these are double strikes and he mutilates him. The Drake's absolutely doing the work there. And at this point, I think we are going to call it a day. There's no way that the elves are coming back from this. They've only got five guys left. Would the game have ended? No, it would continue. But uh, the leader's all the way over there. The goblins have only lost 10. They're not going to lose another 15 or so to break them. It's, uh, oh, in fact, another 10. But, but there's just no way. So we'll end it here. We'll count up the victory points and we'll, uh, we'll come back. With just five elves left, it is game over. And it is a total defeat for the elves. Seven victory points for Moria, getting the, uh, the bat to pick up the objective and fly off. Seven victory points. Then for killing Thranduil, while leader captain is still alive, is two and then the elves are well and truly broken and the goblins definitely not for a final three. That is a 12-0 victory to Moria. I hope you enjoyed that game. It was very, very close. This Drake really did survive there on borrowed time. There were so many turns where I was expecting him to die. And then this flank would have crumbled. It, it really... Uh, it really was unfortunate there for the elves, but a very nice turn of events for the drakes. Glad, uh, glad that I took the plunge and, uh, and went for two of those. Um, not sure if this is quite a tournament level list. It's, uh, it is quite vulnerable to a certain things, but, um, but it's very, very fun. So again, hope you enjoyed this game. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.